Hello, everybody. My name is uh, uh, Craig Ancho. I'm a faculty member in the Department of Horticultural Science at NC State University, and I lead the sweet potato and potato breeding and genetics programs. I've been at NC State for almost 25 years now. We're right now standing in front of what I would call our early and, and advanced uh, generation selections within the breeding program. And I think we're here mostly to talk about our up and coming new purple flesh sweet potatoes. But behind me, and I'll just kind of point away here real quick, this whole field is filled with advanced and preliminary selections uh, from our breeding program. So that consists of orange types, white types, yellow types, and our, our purple types. And they're generally, uh, in this field, they're planted out as anywhere from 25 plant plots to 150 plant plots. And we plant these same materials at another research station. Today we're coming to you from the Horticultural Crops Research Station in Clinton. We plant these same materials at the Cunningham Research Station in, Kin in Kinston. And also, uh, in, a, in a normal year, we would have these same materials planted out at, at at least three other locations on farm. Uh, this year, because of the COVID pandemic, uh, we're only at one farm. That's at Jim Jones's farm up in Bailey, North Carolina, which is in Nash County. And he's a major seed grower. So he has these same materials and is evaluating them for the performance under uh, his own on-farm conditions. So our, our goal here is to evaluate adaptation, uh, to evaluate them for their yield potential, uh, the quality of the storage roots, and specifically with the purple flesh sweet potatoes, we're looking at uh, pigment production. And not only whether they're, uh, they have the anthocyanins, but we also now profile our, our, our purple flesh materials for actually the specific pigments which make up uh, purple color in sweet potatoes. And so we'll do that here at the station. We'll harvest here, we'll take a sample here, and then we'll bring it back to our laboratory uh, where we collaborate with folks in food science at NC State with the USDA ARS, and they'll help us evaluate the actual pigments uh, that make up the purple color in sweet potato. How we've gotten here with the purple flesh sweet potatoes and uh, what we want to do with the, the North Carolina uh, emerging crops program, the NSEP program. Uh, and what I'd like to do is I'm going to take one, two, three steps back and then come forward to you to sort of illustrate this, this project. So really this project started about 15 years ago uh, when we learned about the presence of purple sweet potatoes uh, you know, as a potential market opportunity. But we didn't have purple sweet potatoes that were adapted to North Carolina at that time, or there was only one type of sweet potato that was adapted to, to North Carolina and eventually became called Stokes Purple. But actually, Stokes Purple was an unadapted clone that was picked up from a, a small uh, farmer uh, at the farmer's market. It had been floating around in the breeding programs for many, many years, and it really was very poorly adapted, it had very little disease resistance, uh, didn't have very good shape, and it certainly didn't store very well. So we literally scanned the globe uh, and brought exotic uh, materials into North Carolina that uh, were purple flesh, mainly through our collaborations with the International Potato Center uh, down in uh, Lima, Peru. Um, we brought those materials here and we started crossing them with orange and white flesh adaptive materials in our breeding program. Uh, the first crosses uh, were really, really very, very poorly adapted. We got some purple progeny from them. Uh, now this is back in the early 2000s here now. We got some materials that were somewhat adapted that were ex expressing anthocyanins in their flesh, but the vast majority of them were long, stringy, and they just didn't look like a sweet potato, and we certainly couldn't commercialize them, and they certainly didn't have the disease resistance. But we kept on making crosses, selecting, evaluating for adaptation, evaluating for yield and disease resistance, and after about maybe five cycles of crossing, we thought we were on to something. And during that time, interest in sweet potato grew as a result of some of the other 
growth in the industry, and consumers were looking for new types, uh, new shapes, new colors, new flavors, new nutritional properties in sweet potato, and there started to become a bit of a pull out of the market to say, why don't you develop these purple ones for us? We might have a market to us. Growers started coming to us saying, I think we might have a market in the overseas market for purple flesh sweet potatoes where they're more often apt to try something new in the purple in the sweet potato market area. And so we, we started working with them. Fast forward after about maybe five years and about maybe two or three more breeding cycles, uh, we've now developed a suite of purple flesh materials which we think have great market potential. And the uh, the Emerging Crops Program, I think, is going to help us realize that market potential of two of our most advanced purple clones that we have in the pipeline right now. Right now, they're numbered clones, uh, and I, I don't need to give you the numbers right now, but they actually look quite good. And what we're doing with this is we're using the NSEP program to increase the volume of seed that we have to put the materials through the tissue culture process so that they go through a mariculturing process. And now we're starting to ramp them up with major seed growers and a couple of other major producers who are doing test marketing. And the funds from the uh, Emerging Crops program is going to help us take the materials to that next step. Uh, there are two clones that we really like. It's NCP 14-0015 uh, and the same one NCP 14-0030, which are our two most advanced clones. I've got names for them already but we're not ready to divulge those names. We'll do that in the wintertime.